Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the concepts of reducing and non-reducing sugars. Okay, so one of one of these areas of the course that we need to be able to distinguish is between um, mono or between sugars, saccharides, mono diet, you know, however much that exhibit this particular behaviour. Now, without having studied um, the concepts of oxidation and reduction just yet. Um, some of these ideas will be perhaps a we'll touch on a little bit briefly um, with a view to then unpacking it a little bit further a bit later on. Okay, so what I have I've drawn here, we've got glucose and fructose, the structures here. So we've got for both of them, we've got the open chain version and then the ring, closed ring version. Okay, now we know that these structures can interconvert very easily between backwards and forwards. Okay, and so what, um, yeah, so we're kind of looking at that, that sort of structure. And so one thing that I want to I want to highlight for you here, or kind of remind for you, is this group here and this group here. Okay, so what you notice in each of these structures is this carbon double bonded to an oxygen. And we call this a carbonyl group. Okay, so this particular functional group is common to these compounds and lots of other compounds that, that, um, that, that you know, this isn't just exclusively a sugars thing. Okay, but the idea is that the presence of this carbonyl group is going to play an important role as we go on. Okay, and I'll unpack that a little bit further. But what we, um, what we, I'm going to do, just to, to kind of simplify the sorts of things that come next, is that I'm going to say, let's, let's just for this this one, let's just consider all of the rest of this carbon chain to be R. Okay, so this is going to be R, and then we're going to do that. We could do the same thing over here. Just because well, what we see is that that this group and this group is what's actually going to be particularly important in the next bit. Okay, so what we have that glucose and sugars like it. We're going to represent as R um, C H O. Now that C H O is just this way of of abbreviating um, that particular format. And then fructose, we're going to represent it as R C O C H two O H. Okay. Um, so the R kind of representing the rest of the sugar structure, and then actually making sure that we are showing um, these extra groups. Okay, so what the the reason that this that I wanted to to highlight these these kind of structures for you this carbonyl group is that this group is what's um, really crucial in actually changing around to link together to become um, for uh, yeah it becomes the OH group that's here and here. Okay, the oxygen that's here is the one that becomes over here, and so it's the one that yeah when we're linking together from the open chain version into the closed ring the ring version, that it's it's really crucial, okay? And then it's the OH group that's over here that becomes the oxygen in the ring. I'll just even go that one extra step to kind of, to remind you of that fact from, we've looked at this in the video before, okay? Um, but so what happens is that it's to do what what this concept of reducing and non-reducing sugars has to do with is the chemistry of this carbonyl group and a particular type of reaction that it undergoes. Okay, and so what we're going to do is then um, I'm going to use some of this this kind of um, terminology. All right, I'm going to clean the board off and then we'll we'll get to that. Okay, so we've cleaned it off. We've established this um, this kind of general sort of terminology for for this reaction that's going to come. So what we recognise is that the structure of sugars like this, that these um, sugars are easily oxidised. Okay, so a type of chemical reaction that involves um, changing um, the structure of these compounds into um, carboxylic acids. Okay, and so what we get is that this becomes something along these lines, and that this becomes something along these lines. Okay, now actually what I might do, even for, for simplicity here, or just to help you kind of understand 
how this particular one is kind of arranged. Is it to do this? Like that. Okay. Um, so what, what's happened here is that we recognized, um, and I'm going to put an O in square brackets over here, which is kind of a universal chemistry symbol for this, this type of changing process, oxidation. So when we're thinking about this sort of chemistry, that we, we use terms like oxidized, and the companion process is reduced. Okay, so oxidized and then reduced. Um, because this is um, a type of chemical reaction that occurs in pairs. A bit like when we looked at um, forming ions in the past, that one gives and the other takes. So oxidation and reduction, which are the names of these two kind of companion processes, involve electron transfer. Okay, you don't, um, we, like I said, we will d discuss the mechanisms in much more detail as we go on. But for now, um, it's just, it's something that, that we need to recognize that's saying that if this change happens, and in doing so that that happens with, because there's another reactant that is changed as well, if we can pick a reactant that is changed as well, that's easy to spot, then we can use that to distinguish or identify the sugars that are easily oxidized. Okay, a substance um, that is so um, sugar that oxidizes is known as a reducing sugar, and then a sugar that doesn't oxidize is known as a non reducing sugar. So what we need to be able to do is use this simple chemical test to be able to identify the sugars that do oxidize and all undergo this change and distinguish it from those that don't. Okay, and the good news is that there are simple, there is a simple test that we can use to make that happen. And so I'm going to um, show you the chemistry of that now. Okay, so what we're calling this is its failings test or reagent. Now, it's, it's not the only test that it is out there, um, but it's the, the kind of the gist of, of what we want, which is a solution of copper 2+, plus, um, which is in an alkaline um, solution of the tartrate ion, okay, which comes from tartaric acid. Okay, so what happens here is that our... Um, our reducing sugar is converted to a carboxylic acid. Now I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do a couple of little simple processes here and then combine it together into one equation that I want you to write down. Okay, so don't write these down, down yet. Okay, so our sugar is being changed to a carboxylic acid. And then what we're getting is <clears throat> our copper, which is in the presence of hydroxide ions is then being changed into a, a substance of copper, um, copper oxide. Okay. Okay, so I've just <clears throat> neatened up these equations a little bit for you. Um, I've realized that I, I in, in trying to balance this through, that I neglected um, the, the, the format that this carboxylic acid ends up being. Because we've got this in an alkaline or a basic solution, what we have is that the proton from our carboxylic acid is taken away and is being used in this, this process. Okay, so what we have is that our copper 2 plus, which was blue, um, in the presence of hydroxide, then becomes a brick red substance. Okay, this, this kind of precipitate. So I'm just going to combine this together into one equation, that, which is what I want you to write down. Um, Okay, so our sugar plus our copper plus our hydroxide ion goes to become our the salt of our carboxylic acid plus our copper one oxide plus three lots of water. We have blue and this goes to brick red. Okay, <clears throat> now we see also this same sort of same sort of idea if we were to do with fructose. So I'll just do the combined one over here. 
Okay, the chemistry is very similar. The product that we get is slightly different, but not substantially. And the distinguishing presence of our copper one oxide is there as well, you can see. Okay, so what we have, we've undergone a color change from a blue solution to a brick red precipitate. Okay, and that's what we're spotting that tells us that this change has happened. Okay, now what does that tell us about the actual structure of the sugar? Okay, so what I've drawn here is the structures of glucose, fructose, and then sucrose, the disaccharide that forms when we connect these two things together. Okay, so remember that these two things are going to connect together by the condensation reaction between our OH groups here and connecting it um, here at that kind of glycosidic bond in the middle. All right. <clears throat> Now, so what we need for, a, a, for a, a sugar to be reducing is that we need for it to be able to open up and to form that um, CHO group or the CO group, the carbonyl group. So it's to reform that carbonyl group. Um, so let me re write that down. So reducing reforms our carbonyl group. Okay, and therefore non-reducing is something that can't do that. Okay, and so what we need is that we need a carbon that's attached to the oxygen in the ring and also has an OH group attached to it. So in glucose, we have this carbon here, and in fructose, we have this carbon here. Okay, so we need a carbon connected to the O in the ring and has OH group attached. Okay, if it doesn't have that, if we don't have one of those present mm -hmm. in our structure, that then we can't open up again. The ring is kind of locked closed. Okay, so you notice that we've got this carbon here and this carbon here. So glucose and fructose are reducing sugars. Okay, so they get a tick. However, what we notice is that if we look at the same carbons in sucrose here, this carbon is connected to the oxygen in the ring, but this oxygen isn't an, isn't an OH group. This is the carbon connected to the oxygen in the ring, but also doesn't have an OH group. So it can't open up like it used to when it was monosaccharides. So that means that sucrose is a non-reducing sugar, okay? Because it doesn't have an, this, this carbon connected to the oxygen with an OH attached, therefore it can't reform our carbonyl group and it can't be reducing. Okay, now, if we take that sucrose and we heat it up in a nice water aqueous solution so that it breaks down, it hydrolyzes again, then what we see is that we will get a reaction with the, the bits that have broken apart. But for sucrose itself, it won't undergo this reaction. Okay, so that's one of the classic things that we can tell. All right, so that we, in this, we've, we've looked at, reminded ourselves of the structure of monosaccharides and disaccharides, looking at the chemistry of the open chain versions of these sugars and seeing that we can use a chemical test to distinguish between them um, using the failings test, the, the um, copper 2 plus solution, in, um, which is alkaline, and that can distinguish between sugars that can reopen the ring based on having these carbons free and those that can't. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.